Video games are often used to escape reality and distress after a long hard day. But not all games aim to do this. Some genres such as horror games are in fact designed to accomplish just the opposite, where they intend to keep the player on edge throughout. However, one game that walks the line between the two is Subnautica from Unknown Worlds Entertainment. After entering into Early Access in 2016, this indie survival horror game went on to receive various awards, along with praise for its excellent design. While it's rather contradictory that a game can be extremely calming while also incredibly tense, this is the experience that Subnautica offers. Diving into the beautiful underwater open world filled with many secrets to discover will provide hours of entertainment. But there is also the constant fear as to what lurks at the greater depths of the ocean. So let's take a look at how Subnautica is both relaxing and stressful at the same time. But beware of spoilers for the game from here on out. Subnautica takes place after the spaceship you were travelling on crash lands on an alien world. You manage to escape in a life pod where you come to realise that the wreck of the ship you rode in on is the only thing that breaks up the horizon from the ocean. You then take to the water to find the resources and materials you need to survive. It's here you find yourself surrounded by an abundance of magnificent looking flora and fauna that inhabit the strange world. The ocean is divided up into various aquatic biomes, each with unique miniature ecosystems at varying depths beneath the surface. You start the game in relatively shallow water where there are intriguing rock formations with bright and colourful corals that make these reefs feel very welcoming and safe. Eventually you work your way deeper into the ocean and explore the various natural cave formations. The deeper you go, the less light there is coming from the surface, but you suddenly find the world lit up by various bioluminescent plants and animals that live down here. One location of note is the Jelly Shroom Cave, which is illuminated with a bright purple glow from the various flora present here. This area's name references the giant mushroom-like plants that are so large you can even swim inside them, as long as they're not already occupied. One of the larger biomes in the game is the Grand Reef, and is also memorable for its unique luminescent flora. Anchor pods consist of floating blue spheres which are held in place with a net-like structure. There are also peculiar membrane trees which are composed of symbiotic pink fauna and blue corals encased in a bubble-like skin. Subnautica also contrasts these vibrant environments with regions of the world that are rather dark and barren. The lack of wildlife presence is typically the result of larger predators that patrol the area, giving you a sense of anxiety whenever you visit. For instance, the gloomy kelp forest is predominantly green from the large creep vines which conceal stalkers which sneak up on and bite the player. The plot of the game also leads you deeper into the planet's mantle, and as you become surrounded by lakes and waterfalls of lava, the game feels incredibly hostile. This is also where you encounter some of the largest and most dangerous animals, but even these otherworldly creatures have an elegance to them. Subnautica designs the various species in the game so that they have an alien feel, while still being reminiscent of familiar and recognisable creatures found on Earth. For example, most of the herbivore creatures have rather approachable friendly appearances to represent their passive attitude towards the player. Differently, the carnivore predators look intimidating with large teeth and spikes. They also have streamlined bodies built for speed that they use to ambush the player and other animals. But even despite these terrifying creatures, the visually stunning world created by the extensive biodiversity in Subnautica will motivate you to continue exploring, no matter how scared you might feel. The key aspect of a good survival game is how well its crafting system is implemented. Subnautica has a fabricator device straight out of science fiction, which you can use to make virtually anything. Rather than complex menus and grids of recipes, the game favours a series of simple categories, which are easy to navigate, especially when using a gamepad. While some resources are just picked up from the ocean floor, many materials are instead found in various rock outcrops, which you need to smash open. Some are also gathered by using your survival knife to take samples of corals and plants from the environment. The game provides a helpful scanner tool which you can use to identify the various plant and animal species, as well as resources and what they can be used for. You also unlock new crafting recipes by collecting scans of spaceship debris and items found in wrecks. You eventually gather enough resources and blueprints to make a base of operations to store all of your crafting supplies. The modular design allows you to get imaginative and it's entirely possible to ignore the game's story with the creative game mode to focus solely on base building. Subnautica allows you to place a habitat almost anywhere in the world, meaning you will want to choose a good location. You can then incorporate many windows into the structure so you can admire out into the ocean from the safety and comfort of your home. The game also allows you to gather plant cuttings and creature eggs to place in aquariums as base decorations, such as the adorable and aptly named cuddlefish.
Subnautica also has several vehicles that you can build to aid with collecting resources and travelling places quickly. The first of these you will likely build is the Seamoth, which provides you with a portable supply of oxygen and a small amount of storage, which is invaluable for the early game. You can then build a Prawn Exosuit, which provides a method of navigating dangerous and difficult environments. This also offers protection from some of the more hostile creatures, and with upgrades you can even add things like a grappling hook and a mining drill to obtain a lot of resources from large deposits. As you become more established in the world, you can build a Cyclops submarine that effectively acts as a mobile base. This is so large that it can even be outfitted with furniture and decorative items to make it feel like a home away from home. The strength of Subnautica's crafting system is that it pushes you deeper into the ocean to find the rarer resources and unlock recipes that you need to survive. This also pushes the game's narrative forward and you begin to unravel the mysteries of the planet. A word that is often used when describing why Subnautica is a horror game is philosophobia, or the fear of deep bodies of water. While a lot of survival games have a world which acts as a sandbox for the crafting mechanics, Subnautica instead puts a large amount of effort into designing an extensive game world. The advantage is that you feel vulnerable while exploring and have a constant fear of not knowing what you may encounter. It also becomes you versus the hazardous planet to survive and you will constantly be checking your peripheral vision for things that may be hiding in the darkness around you. The narrow and claustrophobic cave systems and wreckages are also incredibly hard to navigate. Exploring them naturally ends up being a race against time to find the way back out before dying of thirst, starvation or lack of oxygen. Subnautica also gives you very few ways that you can defend yourself from the hostile creatures in the game. Weapons were removed from standard survival blueprints following the massacre on Abraxas Prime. The knife remains the only exception. But even the survival knife or the prawn suit drill attachment are effectively useless against the larger species. Your best survival strategy is usually to take a stealthy approach and sneak past them or use a form of distraction as a last resort. The game's audio design also perfectly creates an unsettling ambience, and many sounds in the game will still invoke fear in anyone who has completed the game. You often hear mysterious vocalizations from creatures roaring in the distance, however sometimes these screams appear to be a lot closer than you are comfortable with. The storytelling in Subnautica also gently pushes you towards discovering new locations in the game, and initially you search for the life pods of other survivors. You are also guided towards islands that offer solid land to walk on, but the remains of habitats built by previous survivors are a reminder that survival is unlikely. Eventually you stumble upon strange alien facilities where it dawns on you just how out of your depth you may be, especially after an unknown creature makes contact with you at a random point in the game. Subnautica's brilliance is that it only gives the player subtle nudges in the right direction, which allows you to go at your own pace. This gives you the chance to physically and mentally prepare before going on expeditions into the unknown. While underwater sections in video games are often bad, Subnautica is a perfect example of how to do a survival horror game below the waves. Despite the frights that lie below, the stunning visuals and excellent narrative make you willing to face your fears, and uncover the secrets of the mysterious planet. The result is that Subnautica is both a very relaxing, but also an unbelievably stressful game to play. <laughs> 